Hello, I'm Dr. John Puskas. I'm accompanied by Dr. Michael Halkos and Dr. Robert Kiai. Uh, we are here to discuss the future, the present, and the future of hybrid coronary vascularization. I'm going to start with Dr. Kiai. Um, Robert, you have published a very interesting paper reporting the outcomes in Canada with robotic uh, hybrid coronary vas revascularization. Can you first tell us what that is and then tell us about the paper and what, what you think it means? Well, hybrid revascularization is when you take the combination of both modalities of revascularization, which is primarily revascularizing the anterior descending coronary artery, the left anterior descending coronary artery with the left internal thoracic artery, and performing that in the minimal invasive technique with robotic assistance, followed by uh, percutaneous coronary intervention of the non-LAD vessels. Uh, we started this uh, uh, endeavor back in 2004, and uh, since then other institutions in Canada have also adopted this particular type of modality of revascularization. And the paper that you just mentioned, uh, we looked at the Canadian experience across Canada, which is three centers, and we published it in the innovations and we presented at the Canadian meeting, um, which was uh, uh, looking at the 202 combined patients. So these are centers in London, Ontario, Ottawa, the capital of Canada, and Vancouver. You lead the center in London, which I think has the largest experience in Canada. Correct. So you are then the most experienced robotic coronary surgeon in the nation Correct. of Canada. And, and this combined experience with these three leading centers uh, produced 200 patients or 200 plus patients in what period of time? That was looking at a period of between 2000 and uh, um, 10 to 2016, so over a six year period. Okay. Tell us of the results. How did those patients do? Why, why would a patient want to have this procedure? Well, when we looked at the results, the outcomes, the patency rate was extremely good in all the patients that underwent the left internal thoracic artery bypass. And the stent patency rate was over 94% uh, when we basically looked at their patency at six months, again, at five years. And the quality of life and recurrent angina repeat revascularization again, was very uh, acceptable within basically the other literature in terms of percutaneous core intervention. Now, if I remember from that paper, the syntax score was relatively low. These are not patients who should have four or five arterial grafts, but rather the patients with focal disease in the proximal LED or mid-LED and focal disease in the right or circumflex. They typically received one or two stents in the non-LED lesion and a robotic bypass in the LED. And if I remember, the patency rate of the ITA graft was about 98.5%. I mean, Correct. it was really spectacular. Yep. Correct. Uh, outstanding results. And uh, Dr. Halkos, you and I uh, built together the robotic program mm -hmm. uh, at Emory, and you lead that enterprise now uh, and have accomplished uh, several hundred uh, robotic bypasses now at Emory. Uh, you've also carefully studied your results uh, and compared those uh, to multivessel off pump bypass and to multivessel on pump bypass. Sure. And published numerous papers. Can you tell us how do, how do the, those two mod modalities stack up? Um, and then let's talk a little bit about patient selection for each. Sure. So uh, you're correct. We've done over 800 of these uh, robotic assisted bypass cases at Emory. Uh, half are in the setting of multivessel coronary disease. Uh, and we've compared the results of these hybrid procedures to traditional bypass operations, which include either on or off pump uh, revascularization procedures. And there's some general themes which continue to emerge very consistently. Uh, both at Emory, but also across the country for everybody that's involved in these cases. And those include um, basically an elimination of sternal complications because we've eliminated or at least minimized uh, the need for sternotomy. Uh, we have seen a sharp reduction in the incidence of stroke because we're no longer using the heart-lung machine and we're no longer manipulating the aorta. So that's consistent with even traditional sternotomy uh, and aortic off-pump cases, so it's very consistent. Uh, we've seen uh, very excellent results in the non-LED vessels with PCI and patency rates over 97% for Lima LED grafting. Almost all of the hybrid patients having a an angiogram confirming Lima LED patency after the PCI portion of the procedure. So those are remarkable, I think, trends and morbidity outcomes. Uh, survival has been excellent. Uh, repeat revascularization, extremely low. Uh, blood transfusions and the need uh, and bleeding complications are a fraction of what we see with traditional sternotomy. Uh, time in the hospital and on the ventilator and in the ICU 
are drastically reduced with hybrid approaches. So it is a good procedure when there's anatomic uh, anatomy that's, when there's anatomic complexity favorable for, uh, for a hybrid procedure, which as you mentioned is a low syntax or at uh, mid syntax score uh, tertile. Uh, and the patients with more severe complex disease do best with a traditional operation. We do feel and we've shown that in high risk patients, those with high, a high frequency of comorbidities that may be at higher risk for complications and or mortality after a traditional surgery, there is a uh, dis distinct benefit in those patients to avoid a sternotomy and to do it through a sternal sparing approach. So, um, Patient selection, as you mentioned, is very important. Um, for me, the two things that they have to uh, be considered, and at this point in my experience, I need really just one of them. One is they have to have an LED that's favorable for grafting through a small incision, or they have to have a body habitus that's um, amenable to a small incision approach. I would say in, in a surgeon's early experience with these procedures, they should probably have both of those criteria you know, before embarking on that type of operation. So this um, hybrid revascularization is a new paradigm. We have often thought for many years of either PCI or multivessel cabbage. Now there's this thing in between. <coughs> and of course it can be embraced by the enthusiasts for cabbage and the enthusiasts for PCI or it can be attacked mm -hmm. by both groups and we have felt that from all sides. Of course. Uh, the surgeons who are least en enthusiastic about hybrid have the mistaken belief that it is poaching cabbage patients. And the cardiologists who are least in favor of hybrid seem to think that it's poaching PCI patients. And in fact, I think when we choose the patients correctly, it does neither of those things. Correct. We are typically performing hybrid revascularization for patients who would get two or three stents and leave the building with, without ever having a heart team conversation mm -hmm. with you two, my dear friends. And certainly the same has been true in my institution. But with the advent of hybrid revascularization, um, many of our cardiologists are preferring not to do a complex LED um, calcified lesion, and rather to send the patient for a robotic bypass and then mm -hmm. stent that right coronary or the circumflex. And just as you and I did together at Emory, many cases with left main stenosis. Sure. This is a terrific modality for that isolated bifurcation left main stenosis, especially if it has a follow-on lesion in the proximal LED we do the robotic bypass to mm -hmm. the LED and then the cardiologist has the comfort and security and patient safety to stent the left main into the circumflex mm -hmm. after documenting angiographic patency of the ITA. So I think that's a terrific modality. Uh, far better than kissing balloon double stents in the distal left main. Um, <coughs> and we are all now participating in the NIH hybrid revascularization trial which is underway, just getting ramped up. We have about 18 of the planned uh, 50 sites or so now online and enrolling patients. And uh, we look forward to studying those patients for five years and reporting back. That trial will compare hybrid revascularization versus multivessel stenting. There is no cabbage group in that trial. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to understand what patient population hybrid is really aiming to serve. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. And for your contribution to CTSNet. Thank you.